Hey there everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuck with Queen Bee Creations and today we're gonna to play with watercolor. Now, one of the things, and let me, let me start by saying I'm not good. I'm not good with watercolors. I'm learning, but I get a lot of people that do ask me, okay, I'd love to get better at watercolor, but apart from doing abstracts, I'm kind of challenged because I can't really draw. And it all starts with creating a sketch. So one of the things that I have done is made your life a little easier and my life a little easier because, so I've, I've said before, you know what? A lot of times when I'm just playing, I just use really cheap, inexpensive watercolor paper. This is a pad I got from the dollar store. It was $3.25, so maybe not quite dollar store, but still, 20 pages, three bucks, pretty inexpensive. The nice thing about this is that this is pretty much like an eight and a quarter by 11 inch piece of paper, which means most printers feed through eight and a half by 11. This feeds through my laser jet printer just fine. So you can go on the internet and you can just print out, I mean, you could do coloring book pages. You can do sketch outlines, right? Um, so, and they can be more precise, they can be more loose. And then this can be your guide. And then that way you're not focusing so much on, oh, I have to be able to sketch out something, I have to be able to draw it. You can focus on how do I paint watercolor? The cool thing about this, now I don't know if it's true for an ink jet, you would have to try it and see because I don't own an ink jet. But on a laser jet, this doesn't smear with water. So it ends up being permanent. And now you have something that you can use as the design. So in essence, you're printing out your own little watercolor coloring book. So I'm going to play with this design. I'm going to get it taped down so that as I wet it, it doesn't buckle and I'll bring you in overhead and we can paint this up together. Now the cool thing about this technique, of course, is that you can print out multiple copies of the same picture and try different techniques using the same picture and see how that technique works for you. Now I just have like a pan of watercolor paints. I have a brush, obviously, and some clean water, a little cloth to dab my, my brush off on. And I'm just going to play more than anything else. Just look at trying to do something. I'm practicing on doing something fairly loose because I like, I tend to always fall into doing something very precise. So I'm just laying down a bit of color here along the edge. This is kind of like water and I just want to get some of this in. This is just water I'm adding now because this was all kind of much harsher or more specific than I wanted. And I just want to start seeing about just dropping in some colors. Oh, that was not very much of that. So this is, you know, you can wet your whole page and do wet, which is your watercolor, into there. You can do it on dry. There's so many different techniques with this. So it's, it's about, okay, how can I practice? How can I, how can I play with this to create some different looks and, and shadings and That's, that's the beauty of this. And if I really hate what I do here, I can print out another copy of it and try something else. Gee, I'm not so good with that technique, or let me try it again. I was close. 
And you can see easily that I am not getting, I am not getting any smearing here. Oh, that's a lot greener than I wanted. So what I'm doing is I am rinsing off my brush and looking to spread that out. Oh, okay, that's better. I like that. Let's take some of that green down in here then in behind. And this is the beauty of it. Is to start adding what you want where you want. Okay, I'm gonna maybe try and add a little bit of blue sky at the beginning, but I want this really wet. Because then I can take this behind this tree a little bit. Brighter blue. Okay. And that way when this dries, then I can paint over top of this with some of these trees. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't get uh, too stuck into, I don't know what color that is. Black, black maybe. Okay, I need a darker brown. was trying to create a little bit more depth up close, right? A little bit of the darker color there and then fading into the background. Not sure that I got great shadowing, differentiating the hills. That would be something that I would play with doing this again. Um, the trees, I just kind of dropped in a little bit of color. You know, they look like birch bark trees to me. So I dropped in a little bit of color, some some light blue grays and a little bit of brown just to give a little bit of that patchiness look. I opted to add a little bit of slightly green but then kind of orangey brown leaves maybe falling off of this since I did this all in more fall tones. I could go back and do this picture now and do it more green. I could do it so it's more uh, greenery because this doesn't have a lot of leaves on it. I, I went this way, but I could add leaves. I could just use this as the base and I could I could add leaves. It's, it's now maybe use the same picture and do four seasons. It's about simply playing 
with it. And you could see I was using a bunch of water. None of the black was bleeding. So it provides me with a solid base and I can then focus on trialing uh, the watercolor and focus on different effects and different looks and layering of colors more so than did I do a decent sketch, <laughs> right? So, you know, I'm doing this for me. So it's something that enables me to be able to play with what I wanted to play with, which was the watercolor part. In this video, I obviously, as you've been watching, did not explain how I was painting. The point to this video was not um, how to use watercolor, how to build color, any of that kind of stuff. It was about freeing you up to play. You know, finding a little image of something, this is smaller than the one that I did, but then playing with it to drop color in, to be able to create something. Um, and, and I love the, the thought of printing out multiples so that you could play in different ways or if the color didn't react the way you wanted, then how could I try and fix it? Or how could I do different next time? All things look better with a frame, <laughs> can you tell? But, you know, this isn't perfect, but did I learn some stuff as I was doing it? Absolutely. And that's the point of the video. I don't want you to think, gee, I can't draw something to stop you from trying to paint something. And this, you know, doing this should give you an idea that your sketches don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be pristine. They don't have to be detailed. When you're adding in the color, it kind of comes together. That was one of my lessons. I tend to try and, and, and paint perfect and precise, and I can't draw that. I can't draw perfect and precise. This start to show me that I don't need it to be. I need the image to be there as a guide but I can go in different directions. And, and that was a point of the video and why I didn't want to get caught up in giving tons of descriptions of color or shading or that sort of thing. I gave you enough to be able to see what I was doing to kind of show I actually did it. <laughs> I wasn't just telling you to do something I wasn't. Um, but it was more about creating perhaps some of your own watercolor painting pages, I don't want to say coloring pages, but use some of those images, drop those down for yourself. It's not something that I would sell. I would never sell something that was based on this specifically on somebody else's work, but man, to practice with it or to gift it, I don't have a problem with that. And I love the idea of doing this and then doing it again and using a completely different color palette. You know, you can easily write on the backing of these, what colors did you use? You know, drop them in on the back and put the name beside them so that you know that was a color palette. And then challenge yourself to do it with different colors. You know, this was, this was done with, with more of, of some of the ochres and some browns and, you know, some, some deeper greens. What if, what if I did it where nothing was like it was supposed to? Maybe it was all in blues. Maybe it was all in shades of black um, and grays. Maybe I, I used a lot of reds and created more of a, maybe I did it at night or it was a, a sunrise or a sunset sky. There's so many variations and ways to be able to play with it. And it's kind of interesting to do it using the same image over and over and over again so that you see just the impact and the effect of color itself. So this is more of an exercise to engage in. Using a, a found sketch frees you from getting locked into the need to create an image and allows you to just focus on the use of color to be able to move the image itself in whatever direction you're moved to do. I hope this kind of helps you. I hope that those of you that 
have wanted to try watercolor and it was the, the drawing part or the creating an image to paint with part, if that's what was holding you back, I hope that this kind of frees you to start to play. It worked just great. No bleeding of the image itself. Not sure how an inkjet versus a laser jet would work. So if you know, or if you try it, drop that in for everybody. But I had a lot of fun with this and I'm certainly going to be using this technique in the future um, to be able to play and use it as a study in, in watercolor and how it, how it works and how it moves. Let me know if this helped you in any way. I sure hope it did. I definitely look forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, take care.